Okay, go. Good afternoon. Here we are, Wednesday, 15th of September, 2021, near the village of Senkowa in southern Poland at the foothill of the Carpathians. And I've just been mushroom picking. It's a wonderful season and there are so many fungi. I can just show you just a few as an example. It's been extremely successful. But what I wanted to do now is to create a scene for you that could have happened 3,000 years ago in this exact forest, in this exact place. And coming home then with the mushrooms, extremely good spirits, I then trudge my way home. And as I walk home, I suddenly step into what looks like quite a boggy terrain. But then I look at the bog itself and I see that it, the water in it seems to be a little bit different from the water from which I'm used to. It seems to be black and slimy. So I put my fingers in because we as humans are hugely curious to know about things in the world. And I look at that and I say, oh, my word. This isn't the water which is just in that lake over there, that small pond over there. This seems to be a completely different kind of water. So, of course, being curious as all humans are, I would have smelt it and I would have said, whoa, that's definitely different. It's a, it's a, a smell which I can't describe. And at the same time, I notice it's very, very slimy and slippery. So, what would happen? Well, I would have given it a name. I would have got back to my friend and said, hey, guess what? I found a new kind of water. Black, smelly water. And that's exactly what people did in those days. But, being curious and being intelligent, people have always wanted to know more. So they would have come back. And I wanted to tell you also that this black smelly water oozes out of the ground in this place. It actually comes out of the ground. And all around in this forest, there are places similar to this, where this black smelly water oozes out of the ground. So what I want to do now is to just show you how we as intelligent human beings have learnt a few things about this black smelly water. I have here set up a few bits and pieces from a modern chemical laboratory and I just wanted to show you a few of the most basic things that people would have done in connection with this black smelly water. Well obviously the first thing is they would have compared it with normal water. So you see here I have in my flask, beautifully, this is a bit of water from the pond just above there. And they would have said, well, that's peculiar. How come that water in the pond there is like that? And this water which comes out of the ground is like this. So if I pour a small amount of this on like that, you see, it initially sinks to the bottom, but then it floats to the top. And if I take my flask, holding it beautifully illuminated in the sunlight, you can clearly see there are two layers. But then people said, well, what happens if you mix these layers? So I'll mix them together. And there you see, it's become a horrible black mess, all mixed up together. But hold a few minutes. If we now wait for a minute or two, then very rapidly you will see that the layers start to separate again. The cloudiness is becoming apparent at the bottom. We are beginning to see through the bottom now and light is beginning to shine through there. And what is happening is that our black smelly water is returning back to the top. Now what this shows of course is that the black smelly water and our normal drinking water from our lake don't mix at all. You see the water from our pond has come from either from rainwater or the clouds or some, somewhere like that you see, but this black smelly water only comes out of the ground and indeed in this part of southern Poland. And I have to tell you that many thousands of years ago, Poland was not the only place where this oil, this black smelly water used to come out of the ground. Specifically Mesopotamia, China, India, and in South America. In those territories which we call by those names today, that, that is where that's this black smelly water used to appear. I am now just going to show you a couple of other interesting applications. I wanted to first tell you that because of course this didn't mix with water, 
people in those days, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, they would have said this is very useful because we could use it for waterproofing things. So for instance, if you paint wood with this black smelly water, the wood won't soak up water. And therefore, boats and ships which used to sail the days of the Phoenicians, the, the Mesopotamians, all that, the, thousands of years ago, the boats underneath were coated with this black smelly water. It, furthermore, it was also used to make leather waterproof. It was, leather was soaked in it and then it became waterproof. It would repel water. Another most curious use of this black smelly water was used for medicinal purposes. It was found to be an excellent antiseptic. So if people put, rubbed some on a wound, for instance, it would, was found that the wound would heal more rapidly. But now I want to tell you about another invention. One of the greatest inventions of the human race, of course, was the wheel. The wheel probably invented 3,500, 4,000, 5,000 years, we don't know exactly, but no one will dispute the fact that the wheel has, the invention of the wheel has completely changed the world that we live in. We know, for instance, that the Egyptians built pyramids by having logs and rolling huge stones around on logs. But when you have a wheel connected to an axle, then we have completely new transport possibilities available. And here I have a very, very simple demonstration of a wheel on an axle. And if you see if I turn it, it turns only moderately. However, However, the intelligent people of many thousand years ago said, why don't we put some of our black smelly water, which is slippery and slimy? Perhaps that will improve the speed or the easiness with which the wheel turns. So I have a paintbrush here. I have a container, which I'm going to now dip into, uh, I'm going to put my paintbrush in and then smear some of my black smelly water onto the axle of the wheel. You see, there it is. I'm smear it, smearing it on like that. It's made a bit of a mess, of course, but now you see if we now move the wheel around and give it a thing, you'll notice it turns much more smooth. Let me just put a tiny bit more on. You must excuse me, I get rather carried away, you see, uh, with, these, with these experiments. It's just such fun doing them. Just move it up and down and then spin it again. And there you see an improved rotation. I, we're not going to do measurements, but I'm sure you can see the point has been made. And the fact is that when wheels were developed and different metals started to be used, this black smelly water turned out to be phenomenally useful as an early lubricant. And now the final point I wanted to come to, and that's of course one of the most fascinating topics in the history of the human race, and that of course is fire. And as we know, as I've mentioned before, fire, a flame like this, is one of the greatest triumphs of early human civilizations. And how the fire burns and how it affects things, that is one of the key types of early chemical experiments. In those days, people didn't call it chemistry. We could say they were technologists or chemical technologists, and they would certainly have said, does this oil burn, you see? So I have a small amount of my oil in here, and they would have said, does black smelly oil burn? They would have heated it, they would have boiled it, and they would have tried to burn it. And if I now put my candle flame, my, rather my flame there, it's trying to burn, it's trying to do something, but not really too well. But you see, if we now boil it, if I now boil it up in my candle flame, I have a tiny container here, and now boil it, then you see we do have something different occurring. As the, as the black smelly water gets hotter and hotter, you'll gradually be able to see that it's fuming. You can see that there is a smoke of some kind coming off, and in fact, Listen, you can hear it crackling. And now, if I just gently, gently boil it, and there she goes. And there you see the black smelly water does burn after all, but only when heated. And there it is, you see, burning away in my little container with a foul smoke coming off. 
Now, you see, they would have said, oh, can we use this as a fuel? People always said that, there, can we cook on this? Can we use it as a source of, as a source of uh, heating or something like that? Clearly not, because this foul, smoky flame doesn't catch fire that easily. And therefore, it, um, it, it, we did not use it for many, many hundreds of, many centuries. This black, smelly water did not serve as a fuel until the development of modern chemistry. Now, I just wanted to show you one more tiny experiment with this, because this type of oil was used, but not this particular type of black smelly water or oil. I'm just going to put this on the ground. I have to be very careful, by the way, not to set fire to the forest. That's why I'm letting this burn itself out. We're carefully putting it down there. It will continue to burn. And excuse me, my tongs have got slightly caught up in it. We shall monitor that fire very carefully indeed. And I just wanted to show you one other thing. You see, I have here a piece of string. This piece of string, which I'm holding here, has been soaked in our black smelly water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, and this hasn't been heated up, you see, but if I now set it, put, place it into my flame, you will notice, you will notice that the flame will gradually, that the, that the, that the flame will take hold of our string, which is soaked in this or in this black smelly water. And you see, the reason why is that the heat from the flame heats up the, uh, the um, black smelly water, which is soaked onto the, onto the string, and as it heats it up, so it causes it to catch fire. Now, what I'm demonstrating is a simple, a very, very basic wick. And of course, the, the story of lighting and of using different types of oil um, is a separate story indeed, but please watch how beautifully it continues to burn. Now, what I've shown you, of course, uh, has fascinated people for thousands of years, as I, as I have already told you. And um, in fact, uh, when the chemists started to understand how substances change into different substances, how they started to understand how substances burn and how to separate substances, then great progress was made from the middle of the 19th century onwards in our understanding and our use of this black smelly water, which of course, I am sure you will have guessed by now, today is called crude oil, otherwise known as petroleum. And the word petrol, by the way, is derived from petroleum. And where is the word petroleum derived from? It comes from two Latin words, which literally mean the stone oil. It's oil which comes out of the stones. And that is what we have here. And what, of course, 3,000 years ago, it would never ever have crossed even the most extraordinary person's mind, extraordinary thinker's mind. It would never have occurred to them that 3,000 years down the line, it is thanks to our understanding of the way we could use this black smelly water, otherwise known as crude oil, that in today's world, in the 21st century, thanks to this, today giant man-made metal birds are able to transport hundreds of people at a time across planet Earth.